Hey, good evening, Mished. Uh, hey, it's been a while. My name is Batu, but my friends call me Ryan. No, I'm just kidding. This is Brandon. With me is my good buddy Jeff. Jeff is um, just escaped from a lumberjack prison or something. I don't know what's going on there, but um, otherwise known as my snowy driveway. Your snowy driveway. Jeff has got like what is it, a two-mile driveway or something like that? Uh, two and a half, but two we'll and a half miles. Two. Yeah, is that why your shirt says uh, 350 miles on it at the bottom? Is uh, yeah. Pinkney, it's 350 miles, man. Wow, look I at have, you. This is probably the oldest shirt I have, and it's the softest and most comfortable. It's starting to get holes in it. Do you have any shirts like that? I, you know what? I believe it or not, I have a, um, I've got a Nike shirt that I wore in my seventh grade picture. Uh, wow. Or, or, or the picture from the first day of school. You know, where you're wearing a, you know, holding your backpack and getting ready to go. Um, and like, you know, back at that time, you know, baggy shirts were in. So it's not baggy anymore. It's pretty tight, but it's still a good running shirt. And um, you know, it's got the neon pink and neon blue, so it's, hey, things come back in style, so I'm glad I didn't uh, let my mom throw it out, or my wife, you know, now that uh, it's made it into our, into our, our house, so, um, yeah, I've got, I've got some clothes that, um, that still fit me from when I was, uh, um, how old is that, I don't know, seventh grade, so, um, Jeff, we haven't um, done this Mished Live show in a while, um, you, you, had an accident. You you broke your finger, um, so you were out of commission for a little bit. Yeah, there's the. Um, he's trying to show it. Let me see. Uh, show show that again. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's looking a little better. He was um, well, Jeff wrapped up, so it's gonna look better. But that's right. Jeff um, was coming in the office with these like huge Frankenstein stitches all over, and it was really grossing us out. And we'd be I'd be eating my uh, my ramen noodles. Actually, a lot of people thought it was cool. You were the one that was grossed out by it. It was pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty gross, man. I mean, especially <laughs> it was pretty gross. I'm eating like pasta, like lasagna and stuff, and it's, ugh. I guess I'm comparing you to the uh, anatomy and physiology teacher. So, I mean, of course she's gonna think it's cool. She thinks it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we'll give her a shout out. Um, so, uh, a little, a little bit different format to this, um, to this Google Hangout on air um, since since last time. At the bottom, I believe, if you're watching this, there's a there's an applause meter. So you can there's a thumbs up and there's a thumbs down. If you thumbs up. You know, at any point, it's going to clap, and we'll know that we're doing a good job. If you do a thumbs down, it'll boo, or something like that, and then we'll know that that's not a, you know, it's not a good thing we said. And you know, hopefully, it's not like um, you know, cursing and and uh, bad things like that. But um, yeah, just uh, hit that up and and let us know how it goes. So, um, Jeff, what is the topic tonight? Uh, tonight's all about silos and uh, the the amount of grain that you can put in them. All about the silos, about the silos, but no grain. Um, so what's, what's the question? What's question number one? Question number one is: Can you define one silo that exists in your school? No judgments, just share what silos exist on the district level, building level, um, and what have you? Uh, what silos maybe you created in your own classroom? So you got you got some experience with this. You you know what it's talking about. We're not talking about real silos. We're talking about um, you know, different segregated uh, pockets, right? Yeah, um, and the vest, the vest. But there's two big themes here, Brandon. Um, one talked about uh, it seemed it seemed to be coming from the secondary teachers talking about content areas and how uh, content areas don't necessarily get to talk to one another. Um, there's also the um, uh, the PLC model seems to be brought up a lot and how um, a professional learning communities for, for those that don't know, Brandon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it, talking about how um, teachers don't come in um, with the ability to, um, to collaborate or um, they, they're in a system where in collaboration isn't really fostered. Um, so the, they're... That was kind of some interesting things that I saw there. Um, another, another thing was uh, I actually have the tweet here somewhere if I can. Um, oh, Rob Patton, um, our buddy Rob. Rob. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said uh, when when we have pushed writing and reading across the curriculum, teachers have said that they don't have time to teach it with their content, and uh, that's something I can personally empathize with. Uh, Rob's talking about Common Core literacy standards and how. Uh, social studies and uh, social studies and science have uh, literacy standards that are 
supporting ELA, but really it's um, you know it's literacy across the content areas, and they're the, those content um, standards. They're not really content standards. They're uh, they're supplemental standards that, as a former social studies teacher, I saw pairing up really well to uh, primary document use, secondary document use, analyzing documents, uh, and general writing skills. And so, um, I think I think some teachers have difficulty integrating those into their into their curriculum. But definitely, uh, if you're opposed to embracing those kind of concepts, though, that can lead to silo culture. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, I see uh, Christy Zorhoff says, uh, siloing sub subject matter can help focus down to the nitty-gritty of the content focused practiced. Um, that's, that's answer number two to question number two. But, hey, you know what? It still makes sense, right? Yeah. It still makes sense. Very good. <laughs> Do you, you, um, you had started some other, uh, some other tweets, right? Yeah, um, let me see here. Um, there are a couple teachers talking about how they teach different disciplines. Um, so getting back to the content area stuff again. Um, Lori Hannon says, I teach ancient history and art, so I have many opportunities to not be in a silo. Um, it, it, common theme with the secondary teachers that content area uh, leads to silo culture. Um, there's also one down here from... Oh, where is it? Chris Ming says, almost entire secondary school day is silo. 55 minutes of this, 55 minutes of that. Check the connections at the door. Uh, so the reality of the way that our school days are set up with 55-minute blocks, uh, five minutes to hurry your butt to the next room, and 55 minutes of this, teachers stick to themselves uh, throughout the course of the day. So, like, physically, um, you know, how can... How can we kind of break down those those structures so the teachers are able to collaborate more throughout the day so it's integrated with their school day rather than just being, oh, an hour after school where they're already exhausted and maybe not in the mood for uh, collaboration at that point. Is it, isn't there some, like, interplay between the different... Um you know, the different subjects and the different teachers? Um, you know, you, you build on one concept in let's say science and then you also have that concept in math does that still happen I you know my reality of what I observed for for so long was a secondary setting and for the most part I kinda stuck to myself uh, there was there was silo culture amongst content which a lot of te a lot of people out there are mentioning tonight but then uh, also just um, Silo culture between, like, pedagogical practice as well. Um, you know, you would think that I met in, in a PLC every Tuesday. You would think that we would share lessons uh, among social studies teachers, and that just didn't happen. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, people in my department looked at me um, not disrespectfully or anything, but I was integrating technology heavily into. Um, into my school day and having kids increasingly work in online environments and they kind of looked at that as you know he's tech savvy he knows how to use that stuff I can't really learn how to do that and so I gotta go my own path so there's like this this ideology stuff where there's this barrier of you know reluctance to participate because it it looks like you know person A is doing something that that's totally foreign to person B and so they they respect it and but polite politely uh, decline to collaborate with you because they they just think that they can't which isn't necessarily it, and it's definitely not the case definitely not the case do you think that's a that's a personality thing I, I, there's there's personality parts to it too. Would that be necessarily a personality thing? Um, maybe. You mean like personality wise like I, I, I just um, I don't want to teach like that guy or I don't like working with that guy? Or you know or I'm not um, I'm not on the same page I don't you know if, if, if you're using a lot of technology in the classroom it's like oh, I don't like technology that's that's voodoo um, you know I don't I don't want to have anything to do with that. There was some of that. I, I remember uh, there was one time where I 
we came into a meeting after school on Tuesdays after school. We, you know, teachers get together in the departments. Um, this is when I was at the high school level, so we even broke down into uh, the course area. So I was in there with uh, with all the world history uh, people, and I was just talking to one of my colleagues before we started our meeting, and was explaining to them about what I was doing and um, at that point I, I had just started to um, get into using a, a website for uh, hosting content in an archive so I was creating an archive of, uh, of lessons and and uh, I was talking about using poll everywhere and this guy came in um, and and sat down and overheard this and said why are you, why are you doing that? Why are you opening yourself up to getting in trouble for having their own devices out? Because with Poll Everywhere, obviously, I was having them participate uh, on their own devices, and um, you know, we we got into a thing where I was just like, you know, I I I trust my students to um, to be engaged in this, and I, I've seen that they can be um, when. You know, it's not about the technology, it's the right questions and, and the right purpose and, and me keeping in mind where I'm guiding them. And he came back to me, held up his phone, and hey, I remember we were talking about this earlier, here's a good opportunity for me to show off the, the SVU case. Ooh. He picks up this phone and he, and he goes, okay, Jeff, I'm on my phone, um, tell, me, tell me to Google something, tell me, tell me where to go. You can't tell where I'm at, can you? And it was just like, like how are you going to... It's not a rational conversation. So how am I how am I going to ever be able to collaborate with you um, if if you're going to be so opposed to that? But at the same time, I think I was guilty in thinking this guy this guy's never going to get it, and I'm not going to waste my time with him. I don't True. even I don't even want to talk with him anymore. Right, um, but he was he was mocking you. Right, and and you know I I could have handled it more appropriately, um, but but I didn't. I I was. I was kind of juvenile about it, thinking that he was a dinosaur relic that that wasn't going to, you know, he was out of touch with uh, with modern education, and 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 that kind of attitude is what creates silos. Um, sure. and not necessarily on that same topic, but if you believe that your colleagues will never change, you'll never give them the opportunity to to work with you. You'll never give yourself the opportunity to to evolve and, and grow as an educator because there's a lot of stuff I, I could have learned from him. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, there is not to say that one, you know, one way is, is right and one way is wrong. Um, there's just, you know, different different views and um, there may be some some validity to some of the, the fears that, um, you know, that kind of mindset has. So, um, you know, we've got to, um, although we know, you know, all of the benefits that you know using technology in the classroom can provide. We want to make sure to honor the uh, the concerns of the other people, like in the um, in the teaching community, right? And um, you know maybe they have a, a viewpoint of of a sp of a specific um, you know aspect of it that you kind of were blind to because you're so enamored with um, you know this this device and, and what you're doing with it. So there's there's always room for for improvement, um, there's always room for collaboration. It's what I'm hearing from you, um, even though it may not sound like that person is open to it. Um, maybe they're just afraid, you know, and 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 fearful of what they don't know. And so um, maybe showing them in a in a in a really kind way um, or a really approachable way could uh, could help facilitate that. So um, I think um, well we should move on to the next question. The next question, um, uh, question two is let's honor the value that silos may afford us. What positives might they have? And I saw it, um, a tweet from Matt Mole, who's at m mole seventy four, uh, says silos could allow for student confidence in a particular area. If that's a strength, there is comfort in that. So I, what I think he's saying, and you can you know correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you know you've got uh, you know maybe someone who is uh, really really good at at math, and they're in um, you know when they're in a like a maybe just a general math classroom you know with with a wider population of students, they may feel um, you know bashful about always raising their hand and having the, the right answers and stuff like that. But if they're in a, a a a group of people who are all really really you know excelling at math and passionate about math, then you know. 
knowing the answer might be a badge of honor and you know provide some some confidence there where you know they wouldn't be as likely to do that in you know in a in a greater you know bigger population class does that sound about right yeah I, I, you know what that kind of kind of turning that around what that tells to me is like it's a safe environment right you can um, it's smaller groups uh, if you if you trust the individuals in that in that environment, you are um, we, our our behavior changes depending on who's around us, right? Um, it, you you take out one person or you add one person, it changes the entire dynamic. So yeah, I could I could see that there's a there's a lesson to be learned there um, to really build rapport with students, identify their strengths, and kind of uh, it's like a chemistry act, right? Like uh, about where you can put them in positions to thrive around other people. Um, Absolutely. No, that's, a good, that's a great point that he made. Definitely, yeah, and um, you know, it's very true that we change our behavior based on who we're, who we're around. You know, when I'm not at lunch with you, I don't try to eat an entire overflowing <laughs> plate of nachos, but because you're there and you're doing that, I want to do that too, so... Yeah, man. Maybe that's pure. Maybe that's what Nancy Reagan was like telling us all those years ago about just say no to peer pressure. And um, I don't know. That lesson is lost on me, I guess. Um, so did you did you star any um, uh, answers to to question two? I was talking with my loud mouth through question two. I've got some for for question three. So if uh, if you don't have any more for question two, we can. I got some for question three. If you want. Well, uh, I just wanted to, to give a shout out to our buddy Ben Rhymes. Um, ben says, as it is the answer to uh, question two, as a new teacher, being in a silo can allow you to concentrate on just a few things before tackling larger problems. Right on, right? It, it's a it's a question of like whether, I mean, it might be all semantics, but like, is is that really a silo, or is that kind of just chunking your experience? Is that taking it one step at a time and really laying out the path? I guess I guess I, I guess it definitely could be a silo. When I think of a silo, I think of isolation, and I I do think of it as in a negative context. So, Ben, uh, because you uh, are Ben's hosting this, right? Ben, yeah, I believe he's he's uh, host he's moderating the chat tonight. Okay, um, but uh, you know, it, I think that's a great question. Um, is just making making us think about the positive side of of isolation. There, there's definite um, there's definite benefits to that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's 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 different ways of, of defining a silo, right? One is isolation, um, you know, by yourself. But there's there's also um, focus, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, focus on 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 one uh, column of grain or corn or be that what you may. Um, and then there's also um, uh, lack of communication between, or lack of uh, uh, flow in between the different silos. So, you know, right. something to that as well. Okay, so um, question three, um, if we're moving on here, it says, referring to the Edutopia article, can you share any advantages you've seen with an integrated curriculum? Have you seen growth in student engagement, achievement, application of knowledge? Um, you said you, you start a couple of, of uh, question threes. Um, Rachel Card said, students learn to apply knowledge and skills in natural, engaging ways. This fuels a love and drive for learning. Um, Jeff Bush said, the brain learns by finding patterns and connecting things that aren't necessarily connected. Uh, Kit Hard says, my old school was designed around cross-curricular PBL. It was messy, complex, and wonderful, mostly. Uh, Love looking for connections. So those um, people are saying it's a real authentic kind of way of thinking, um, being able to take lessons that you learned in maybe one content area or, or initially across both content areas and kind of be able to see the world as an opportunity to learn rather than uh, segmented uh, areas. And I, I would agree wholeheartedly with, the, uh, with that kind of idea. All right, and um, uh, is Edutopia the one that um, that George Lucas bought? Is that the right one? Did he? I think so. He bought some. So did like George Lucas sell all of his assets and then just try to buy 
all new ones? Is that no, is, is no. That... I think I think what he did was he sold the rights to Star. He didn't sell like he didn't sell any of his stuff. Um, he didn't like give him stormtrooper costumes or something like that. But I think what he did was he sold the rights to the Star Wars franchise universe to Disney so that they can you know you know make new films and and merchandise and whatnot. And um, from what I understand, he took and it was like. It was like two or four billion dollars for that, and he took the. I mean, he's already you know a billionaire you know several times over, but he took that money he got from the sale of that and invested it into. And I thought it was Edutopia. Maybe someone can can chime in and um and let me know if I'm wrong. But good on him, man. You know that makes up for those uh those three crappy prequels, and um <laughs> you know you give a couple billion dollars to you know to education. Hey, we'll look past Jar Jar Binks. You know. Uh, oh well. Let's not go too far there. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any other uh, question threes that you that you see there? Um, let's see. Uh, Lindsay Boyle says, I think it would make more sense to silo curriculum slash content at a younger age and increase integration as students cognitively mature. Um, so maybe the, the cognitive load of trans... Uh, transcending content would be would be high, um, so that's an interesting idea. Um, what else we got? I don't even know. Um, Gene Campbell said this, and I it doesn't say if it's answer three, um, but maybe it is. Pay attention to what kids are learning elsewhere and look for ways to piggyback. So I that that lines up with question three. Um, well, I think just before that, she had she had tweeted a three students who may struggle in gen ed classes show promise in hands on integrated ones. So maybe that was a follow up to this, and that's our buddy Janine Campbell at Campbell Art Soup. Is that right? Soup? Yeah, Campbell Art Soup. Mmm, noodle soup. Sounds good on a you know when you have to you know plow your um uh, plow your driveway, be outside and uh you know. I'm just gonna get a helicopter, man. Then I don't have to worry. You wanna about get a helicopter? Anymore. Yeah, I, I wonder if my, my roof is reinforced enough. So you would just like like lower the helicopter over your driveway and like let the let the fans uh Yeah, that would be great and then that would just plow the driveway. That's expensive. Gas alone then you that's ridiculous, man. You're uh that's far fetched. I don't want yeah, I don't wanna probably I don't, is. Wanna, I don't wanna call you out here, but geez, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> um, so Anna, who's at Do Think Educate, um, says learning is placed into context. Students see and experience the educational relevance. Kind of important. Smiley face with a blushing. It's not a regular smiling face emoji. It's a smiling face with the rosy cheeks. So it's like I'm very happy, but I'm also blushing a little bit. So she's like, uh, like, oh, this is you know, this is a really good comment, but I'm a little embarrassed because it's so good. Maybe. Maybe. Was that? Uh, Do you say that was at? Do think educate. At do think educate. Well, she followed up. I assume this is to uh, to question four. But start with a topic theme unit. Collaborate via Google Docs. Then join together to create contextual and rich learning experiences. So question four was using the training wheel metaphor from the Edutopia article. We should have read the Edutopia article. Is what we should have done. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I was too busy uh, trying to to find out if George Lucas was behind it, and got all carried but, away. But okay, so George Lucas was on training wheels, and um, can you share one small example of getting started with breaking down silos? I assume that that training wheel example is slow, you know, baby steps, right? Baby steps towards breaking down silos. So, um, so start with uh, Anna here saying, hey, I, "I'm sorry, man. I'm taking this on a horrible." <laughs> Are we still I'm talking about talking, George Lucas? Because I'm, I'm like still talking circles. Seventy-year-old uh, George Lucas on a little tricycle, but, like struggling to, you know, pedal. Like I'm getting there. I'm what, getting there. What a difference it makes when you you take a group of people who are used to working in Word documents and. Um, you and I are both familiar with with people that are used to working in Word documents, and and you change it to a collaborative cloud-based document like that, and 
and let people engage in that. Um, and through modeling and if you have a leader in there, you can model what thoughtful conversation and thoughtful collaboration is. You can you can edit each other's work because you have that trust. But those are those are small incremental steps that start from hey, let's just put let's just put this document into a into a Google Doc and see what we can do sharing back and forth with each other. So I, I, I like that advice. Yeah, absolutely. It, that now it makes sense to me. <laughs> we're, was, on, was we're on question not... number four now. I took us to question four. Gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, so should we um, should we invite other people to join us? And Let's do it. See if we, see if we get some, uh, some Batus maybe? Yeah. Maybe we get some Batu, see what he's up to. That guy, that crazy character, he's all over the place. Well, it looks like, do we have any viewers right now, or are we just talking to ourselves? <laughs> we might, <laughs> I think we lost people with the George Lucas talk. Um, people oh, were yeah. kind of freaked out by that, and like, hmm, I guess the prequels aren't that bad. I guess that's I'm cool sorry. Stuff, but... uh, all, the, all the Jar Jar apologists out there, I'm sorry, but not really. You're going to have to deal with it. Okay. Um, okay. Well, okay. I'm gonna send this tweet. While I'm doing that, why don't you um, why don't you read off a couple of uh, answer fours? All right. Answer four. Uh, I think it's Janice Reed. It's at Reed. R I R E I D G E N I S E. Begin by collaborating, discuss content, and brainstorm ideas conducive to multiple content areas. So speaking the same language and um, it helps with that collaboration flow. Um, our buddy Ant Smart said blended learning in small doses to get everyone comfortable, teachers and the students. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, Caitlin Poplars? I'm, I, I'm the king of butchering names, so uh, you should come on here and, and correct my pronunciations. Give students more freedom on their classes. So give students more freedom in class choices. Offer unique opportunities, not just algebra, U.S. history, or bio. We need to be more creative. Um, you know, that Brandon, that reminds me that uh, when, I, when I was teaching, we had uh, such a high... Well, not a high, but we had a problem with fail, failing students, and we didn't really have a lot of electives for them to take uh, their senior year because everything was so log jammed with uh, with core area content classes. So, it, like a lot of, we lost a lot of electives because students weren't signing up for them because they had to they had to retake a class or or whatever, um, and you know. That's a contribution of failure rate, but then also the the prerequisites uh, in the standards. I mean, students have to take more years of everything now, um, so there's a lot less room for for choice of of elective courses. Yikes! You want to lose anything? It's not good, right? No, and I mean, those. Uh, if you were like me, uh, my my favorite class in high school was a web design class and um, I took it two years and the second year was an independent study and I got to learn a lot of things developing websites for for uh, I think uh, we went to Business Professionals of America conference uh, my my senior year to present it and that that was like one of the coolest experiences of my high school career and and if they would have axed those um, those electives for me, I mean, it, I I can't really tell you another course that I I can vividly remember from high school now that you know I'm so many so many years removed from it. Well, and I bet you there's 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 one of those courses for each one of us out there, right? Um, that one that uh, that really s stuck with us over the years. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we're, we're, we're getting close on time. We better move on to uh, question five. Um, question five was, what would you or your school district need to have in place before breaking down silos on a large scale? How might you restructure curriculum or instructional teams? What do you have in place now that you might want to preserve? What might be your biggest personal obstacle in breaking down silos? So this is probably a pretty hot, uh, hot topic here. Um, I'm still down in the forest, so I'm scrolling up, scrolling up. 
Yeah, I'm not seeing any fives side. yet, man. You, we might actually oh, be at. Gun? Oh, dang, man. But I, I like how you say Hot Topic. Is that like your favorite store in the mall? Hot Topic. Oh, I'm thinking of Hot Pockets. It's when it's, yeah. you know, it's, when it's really hot and uh, and it burnt. Like, it go- Do you know that they don't sell regular Hot Pockets in England? Oh, is it is this a joke? Is it set up as a joke? No, 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 no. This is dead serious. They sell lean pockets, but not hot pockets because the caloric uh, amount uh, that's in a hot pocket is so high that it's considered poison. It's on on a poison <laughs> list. No, no joke. Well, I'm, I'm guessing they don't have the McRib either. They, they probably don't have the McRib. Yeah, that's. Just special for us. Um, yeah. Our friend Emmy Ryder says, uh, and this is back on uh, and, uh, question four while we're waiting for question five. Um, she says, work with specials class two. Create paintings representing a certain time period and study the time period. So that's what we were talking about earlier, the, the interplay between between classes, right? Your art class, you you paint something from the Renaissance, and then you go back to your, uh, would that be your history class or your social studies class, and, and, and talk about the influences uh, from that time that are represented in your in your painting, right? And it doesn't isn't Emmy Ryder a cool name? It, it Emmy sound, Ryder is an awesome name. It sounds like um like a She's like a, a superhero. superhero. It's she a is. superhero. She's a superhero. It would be you know what? You know Knight Rider? Like what if they had like uh, a show where it was like David Hasselhoff's daughter who um, inherited <laughs> the car kit, the talking car, we all know that. And um, was solving crimes and stuff. That'd be That'd be a perfect name, Emmy Ryder. That'd be a. I've met Kit before, and he seems like a real human being. He doesn't seem. Did you meet Kit at um, uh, Universal Studios? At Universal Studios, yeah, I did. I did too. And you know what? The voice of Kit, Mr. Feeney. Mr. No, Feeney. No, no joke. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, guess the more, what? The, the more you know, cue the music. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh man, we're gonna get sued. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so Ben Rhymes posted the, um, you know, the question five. What would you or your school district need to have in place before breaking down silos on a large scale? And Philip Whitelaw at Philip Whitelaw says a, a common, common vision. vision. Uh, Jason Steyer, which is at Hanson two hundred nine, says a wrecking Rec- ball. And don't you dare start <laughs> singing that song because I'll get it in my head all day, and you know, it's you know, it's not good for anybody, but. Um, if, if, if our buddy Roman was here, come he would sing it for us. If it's not like a wrecking ball, how am I going to come into if, the room? If, you, if you'd like to, go ahead. I'll, I'll take up my uh, my uh, head earbuds for a second. I, I, I can't in good good conscience sing this. Okay, hopefully you got it. My, my wife is in the next room, and um, I'd have to put the computer away and go to bed if I started singing that. All right. She'd make you leave the house and you know stand outside. I for hope a bit. not. It's cold outside. <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside for wrecking ball. Oh, our our good friend Tara Maynard says time, time to plan, time to talk, time to reflect, time to create. And uh, you know, and where uh, where she lives in the in the state, she needs time to shovel. <laughs> got a lot of snow. Rob Patton's talking about time too. Uh, he says I'd say time, but it, that doesn't always equate to progress. Uh, perhaps a purpose and plan needs to come first. Yeah, so, you know, so uh, time's not just a hoodie and the blowfish song from 1995. It's very important. But you know what? So is hoodie and the blowfish. Yeah, and I was 10 years old, so... Oh, come on, it. man! <laughs> Talk about my senior year of high school being 10 years old. That's not true. Oh, it probably is. Oh, my God. I was in the Tupac in 95. Yeah, but so when you were 10? Op- when you were 10 yeah, you yeah. Tupac? Yeah. Yeah, well... So... There you Other go. Side of the... That explains your thug life tattoo across your stomach. I got that removed. Okay, good. Did it hurt? No, it was painless. There's there, there's I a just, lot of uh, I just took took a took a wash rag and it came right off. That's <laughs> very good. Very good. Um our good friend Allison, um A Tomp five two six says common planning time, teach Teaming, strategic vision, trust in teachers to hone and shape their craft. Um, Heather Gauk says, uh, I hope that's right. Did you say pwn? No, I said Heather Or Gauk. own. No, you said, so So the tweet was own and shape their craft, right? Yeah. No, 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 hone. Oh, hone. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll put words into my mouth. Like, uh, you know, do you see the word of the year is, is vape? Vape. What is you that? Know, the, the electronic cigarettes. Um, the vapors? Vaping. I'm going to say vape. So that's the word of the year. Vape. Oh, man. I don't care for that. Uh, so Heather, um, Heather Gauck, um, that's G-A-U-C-K, says, wow, I don't even know. My district seems like uh, too humongous a mountain to, to even try to climb. So we got another song here. You know, Ain't No Mount. I don't know what the song is. Um, she'll be coming around the mountain. Ain't no mountain high enough. Um, I don't know. We gotta keep, we gotta come up with songs for each one of these, Jeff. Ain't no mountain high. Ain't no valley low. Emmy Ryder says less stress on standards, testing, and requirements. In quotes, the 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 elusive requirements. Mm. Need time to move away from constant content and try new initiatives. That's right. Um, Janice Reed, who's at Reed Janice, uh, across the curriculum PD and teachers who are risk takers who employ a growth mindset. Mished. Hashtag. Ben is... What's he saying? Oh, he's saying la last question's coming up. Oh. And then he's actually enjoyed the conversation, so he probably doesn't have us on in the back. He's probably not listening to us. <laughs> It's like, you guys are talking about Hootie and the Blowfish, and we're, like, trying to talk about real things. Uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt Mole says, how about an end to seat time requirements from the state, smiley face? Uh, Teresa Kellerman says, challenge. EdCamp-style PD would help maximize time and interest of teachers. Mm. Correct. Correct. Wow. There's a lot, of, a lot of A5s, huh? A5s. I thought... I, I, I thought it was just A2 for Ann Arbor. Mm, no. A5 no. is way better. A5 is way better. Um, uh, Trevor M Muir says administrators have to give teachers space to experiment and even fail. Risk should be rewarded in schools. Risk should be... Uh, what's, what's that saying? And, um, and failure embraced, right? Like, a new definition of failure. failure it's okay to, yeah. Learning. It's okay to fail. That's how you learn, right? Yeah. 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 And most importantly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our buddy Kit Hard says, connectors like this one, Mished, look at all the silos we have here together tonight. That's true. It's like, you know, all these thousands of silos of all the people who are, you know, taking place. Uh, We're all know, out the past tonight. But one big silo called Mished. Think about that. Blow your mind. Question six is up. Question six. All Share right. Share one simple strategy from someone else in the chat this evening that might work to help break down silos in your school. Mm. Share one simple strategy you would like to employ to start breaking down a silo in your school. That's what it says on the Google Docs, so this is taking it a step further. Find something that someone else has tweeted tonight. Yeah, is that how so, you interpret it? Yeah, that's how I interpret it. So um, I'm going to go back to... Uh, Anna's tweet, the do think educate, at do think educate. I like that. Uh, I like maybe, that it's, maybe it's dot hink educate. Dot hink 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 educate. Yeah. But she says start with a topic. It, it was the Google Doc thing. Collaborate via Google Docs and then join together to create contextual and rich learning uh, experiences. Just let, I, I might be reading between the lines with it and might be making up my own tweet here, but just do one little thing. One little thing to push your your colleagues into a collaborative space. Um, and once once you're there, you can continually grow from that. But you, you've got to push yourself to uh, to be collaborative. It just doesn't happen just because you want it to. All right. What's and, the most important thing you learned? The the one little thing you could you can apply. The one little thing that I could apply. apply. Not imply, but apply. <laughs> I did say imply though. Imply. Yeah. yeah. Um to be honest, I wasn't listening to what you said because I was looking for other things. <laughs> but yeah, it's Janine Campbell who says that our buddy Rob Patton had a great idea of visiting other PLCs and asking how they can overlap and support. Visiting others. Bringing it in. It's casting out that uh, that fishing reel. Absolutely. Bring it back in. Maybe Jeff Dahl says, uh, seeking out what others are teaching and seeing how you can add value 
um, paraphrase from Campbell Art Soup. Yeah. Emmy says, take risks. Simple as that. Laura McDonald, who's L. McDonnell 14, with an ant sign in front of that, says uh, someone had a great idea to have act present. Then others offer ideas for uh, expansion. I don't know what act stands for. Do you know? App? No, ACT. Oh, act. take the ACT? Act right. Take your ACT. <laughs> act, uh, I think that, isn't that a... Um, uh, fluoride mouthwash. Fluoride for your, you know, for your periodontist stuff. Um, and that uh, suggestion came from Charity Stevens, who's differentiated for you, letter U. And she's from Missouri. Oh, I see what they did there. There, so the, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. clever. He's clever like Batu likes. He's he's clever like Todd. <laughs> Todd. Todd is clever. Todd is clever. Um, but apparently, he doesn't want to join us tonight because we're talking about nonsense. We're just talking about. Um, Hoodie and the Blowfish. If and there's something that we're really, right. really good at, it's talking about nothing. We're like oh. the Seinfeld of Mished. Yeah, Mished. Yeah. What's the deal with Edutopia? Is it like Fruitopia? Can you drink it? Does George Lucas own it? Probably not. I can't. I, I, I don't do impersonations well. I impersonate myself very well. <laughs> you you do, <laughs> you do a great exaggerated Jeff. I do when, do when you get excited. I do do that. You do do yeah. Um, Lori Hannon says uh, adding art to STEM to make STEAM activities. Oh, look at that STEM science, technology, educate uh, engineering, mathematics. You put an A in there and you got STEAM, STEAM activities. STEAM. You ever hear about that? Yeah, you I ever have. Hear, hear that referred to STEAM? Ad adding the art, putting the art into STEM, right? Going from STEM to STEAM. Now you're right, cooking right. with Cooking water. with STEAM. Now you're cooking with STEAM. You're, you're cooking with uh, uh, really hot water. Um, Sandy, yeah. who's at Techie Teacher One, says, giving students a bigger voice in learning. Ben Gillette says, simply, sharing. Making sure that we share... Uh, Making making sure the share things that we do, making sure that we share things that we do that might help others. Sorry, words are words are difficult for me. <laughs> um, Andrew, uh, is it Shaver or Shaver? I think it's Shaver. Shaver, uh, don't try to change everything. Plan one thing with one one other person. Be gutsy and look to learn from it, not to be perfect. So two things there. Uh, the little little bit. Start small. Um, I'm a big believer in that, and um, nobody's perfect, so we shouldn't expect uh, we shouldn't expect that from ourselves all the time. But what we should expect is the tenacity to get back up and and try something new or try it again and keep with it, right? That's right. And uh, Caitlin Popilars Popilars says uh, she likes that Emmy Ryder said to model, and she also appreciates uh, uh, Lindsay Boyle's uh, point of choice: bring the two together, and it equals joy. Ben Rimes says, our district's data specialist suggested I share tech director chat with the entire district, not just teachers, and then there's a link to it. So check it out. Oh, man, there's a, there's a guy in here. Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps? Hey, yeah. man, I'm Michael Phelps. How you been, man? I'm Mike Dwayne's, man. How, what's up, man? Hey, Michael, how are you? How's how's the uh, the training going? Are you going to be in the Olympics for the... Uh, the training's going well, man. It's like drugs, man. I got to smoke the weed. The weed is part of the... Strategy plan, man. That's why I'm so fast, man. It's all about the weed. That's you are really fast. That's I can't even weed. understand what you're saying. It's all about the gamble, which, man. It's like part of strategy. I mean, it's all like part of my diet, man. I put it on my little subway subs, and it's like a crazy thing to put on subway subs, man. It's like speed, man. It makes me feel like I'm going through the moon, man. Absolutely. Well, I wish you joined us earlier, Michael, because we were we were talking about education in the state of Michigan. Uh, but you know what? Our chat's over at nine o'clock. So, but thanks for joining us. We're, we're happy to yeah, do it. It's been, it's been fun, man. Thank you, man. And Dwayne's, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Um, I don't think that was the real Michael Phelps. I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, he looked just like Michael Phelps. If, you know, if, uh, if I've learned anything from interviews with Michael Phelps, he talks very slow. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> like a sloth. 
on on his own personal time, maybe he talks really, really fast. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So, um, you know, with that, uh, I want to th thank you, Jeff, for joining me for another uh, um, Mishad Live. We haven't done one in, in, in a few weeks, so um, glad to be back in it, and um, hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, and... Um, have a good night, Michelle. <laughs> good night.